Chapter 50, The Rope. I meant to ask you, Chris, how did you convince your father to let you come back to the dojo? We were all seated on the floor. The entire class awaited Sensei's arrival from the back room. It wasn't me, it was you guys. My mother kept saying how great she thought it was that you guys came to the church. Even my father was impressed that you stayed and helped add up the receipts. To tell you the truth, he thought we were all back there playing and pretending. When he saw the figures matching up with his accountant's calculations, he respected that. He had to, Chris said. So are you back in the league? Because you know the blacks play the greens for the season opener. And I wanted to apologize for doing all the dunking I'm going to be doing on you on May 3rd, I said laughing. You might be dunking, but I ain't going to be nowhere around, Chris said. I'm still on punishment. I can do the martial arts because my father thinks I already put so much training into it, and he already put so much money into it. Besides, he thinks that you guys are good and have redeeming qualities, he said laughing. But I can't play in the league because my father said it's high risk. I can't even go out on weekends until school ends, and that's not till June 30th. He looked tight about it. Well, at least you're here, I told him. Who's the red team playing for the opener? I asked Amir. The orange suckers from Crown Heights. But I took your advice, man. I sat my team down. We smoked some weed and talked about shit. We made plans, big plans. I told them I'll never get used to losing, so we had to get on point, Amir said. They took me seriously, too, because if we ain't in the running to get the money, none of this shit makes any C-E-N-T-S. He laughed at his joke. I knew he was serious about that money. You got time. The scrimmage didn't count, I reminded him. Yeah, it was good we lost. Now that we got real games every week, I'll get the gorillas worked up and we'll sweep this thing, he said with a smile. Yeah, I'd like to see that, I smiled back. Being four doors down from Akimi's family store had me crazy. It wasn't just a physical thing. I missed her. I missed seeing her. I missed trying to talk to her. I missed her trying to talk to me. I missed watching the unique things she did and ways she went about it. While working, every now and then I'd look out to see if she would breeze by. I resolved that until she was finished with that art show, I was on the back burner. I just told myself it was the same position she was in when I was hard at work on the wedding job. She handled it and chilled out with Uma. I could accept and handle it too. I could tell Joe had been observing me. I guess it was easy for him to see I was a bit anxious. Holding his reliable old knife in his thick, swollen working hands, he took a side look at me and said, Japanese girl make you into nervous wreck. Friday evening after Uma and Naja were secured, me and Amir met up and went over to Chris's house. Since he couldn't get out, we went to him. His family was at church. He was home alone. We kicked it back at first and listened to some music. Amir had some cassettes of new joints that weren't even released on radio yet. It wasn't so hard to get his hands on them, since all of the rappers coming up were straight out all of our hoods and could even be living in the same building with us even after their joints were banging on the radio. Chris's refrigerator was stacked and the cupboards too, with juicy sodas, chips, and cakes. Seemed like they had more shit than the corner store. All of us chose something different than the other to eat, and we each made it ourselves. Nice house, Amir said, as he made a roast beef sandwich. You over here living like a king. Don't you know better than to let some project niggas in your place? He laughed. This is my father's house, Chris said. Don't you remember the speech? Everything in here belongs to the Christian Broadman Court. That's dad. If I want something, I gotta start up my own business and make it happen, Chris said. It can't be that bad. You got more than what I got. And your pops pays your expenses too, Amir said. Hold up, far as I remember, I'm the only one here who has to go to work in the morning. Amir, your pops pays your expenses too, I joked for sure. Yeah, but I'm living like Hotel 6. Chris is chilling like the Hyatt Regency, we laughed. Later we played ball on his court. While I shook Amir to the hoops, I told him, Now me and you is going to have to work even harder to win that money. If we get it, we still got to cut it three ways. He laughed regular at first, then his laugh grew louder and louder. What? If me and Chris won in the league, you'd want your cut too, I told him. Yeah, but if he's not even putting in work in the league no more, 
then it's like he's getting more free gravy. True, but remember you said three is better than two. Two is better than one, I reminded him. What the fuck does that have to do with this situation? Amir asked. We gotta stick together. Watch each other's back. Keep our word to one another. I said, and sunk the ball in the net at the same time. Oh yeah, what's up with you letting us in on what sense they've been teaching you? You haven't showed us shit. I turned to Chris. You got any rope? Yep, in the garage. Go get it. I'll show both of y'all something.